The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, hello. Good morning, everybody. Hope everyone is doing well. I see there's one person uh, finishing logging in, so I'll give that person a moment, uh, but then we'll begin here shortly. We have a good turnout today. All right, um, we have a lot of material to cover in the hour, so I'd like to begin. This is the basic auto tag training webinar. Today is Wednesday, May 9th, 2018. My name is Eric Johnson, and I will be your Winwood training facilitator today. I'm a technical support engineer here at Winwood studios. I've been here for a little over a half a year now. Maybe you've interacted with me through some help desk tickets. You may have noticed that when you logged into the GoToMeeting webinar, you have a toolbar. The arrow that you see on the screen is put into the raise your hand icon. If any time during the webinar you have a question or or our experience in technical difficulties, please feel free to click that button to ask your question or notify me of anything that's wrong. The thing is, the prompts that I have for questions and, and answers and chat are on my other screen, so I may not see your question immediately. Usually I wait until the Q&A session at the end to answer questions, but I'll check occasionally in case something is posted. Again, this is the basic introduction to AutoTag. We assume that you haven't used AutoTag. Maybe you've installed it, but you probably haven't built any templates. You don't know too much about the interface or how to add tags to your documents. So we'll go over the very basic, the fundamental things to do with AutoTag. Next week, um, there's an intermediate training webinar scheduled. Uh, where we'll cover more advanced features. But for today, the machine I'm working on is Windows 10 operating system, which is 64-bit. And I'm also using Office 2016, also 64-bit. It's okay to use 32 or 64-bit. We recommend Using 64-bit, which allows you to utilize all the memory on your machine when you're building a template and gathering data, because sometimes you're pulling a lot of data and it requires a lot of memory. I think 32-bit only allows you two gigs of memory, uh, while, 30, while 64, you can utilize all you have in your hardware. And the version of AutoTag I'm using is 15.2.279.0. This version was just released last Friday. You can find it on our Winward Software Downloads webpage if you would like to update to the latest. Okay, I want to give you a high-level overview, overview of what we'll be discussing today. We'll take a look at what's within the AutoTag and AutoTag Manager tabs. We'll, we'll create a template using the ForReach and Out tags to create a couple of lists. Uh, these two tags, the ForReach and Out tags, will be uh, the most popular tags that you'll use. We'll go over input parameters or what we consider variables, which are used to filter data before you generate the output. We'll go over a couple of data source wizards, more specifically SQL and XML. We'll, we'll cover how to generate a report, and lastly, uh, how to get some help.
Okay, we're first going to look at what's in the Auto Tag Manager tab. You're not going to access, access this tab that often. It just kind of gets your environment set up. We'll discuss the data source button, which is what you'll use connect, to connect to your data source. We'll go over the find and replace tool. We'll look at the license button. So if you're using a temporary key and want to update it to your permanent key, um, I'll show you where to do this. We'll discuss the about button and we'll and where to get some samples and other tutorials after this webinar okay so when you install auto tag there are two tabs added to the word ribbon auto tag and auto tag manager tabs uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the auto tag manager tab so i'm gonna open up a blank word document it's opening up on my other screen, so I'm just going to slide it over here. Let me expand on this. Okay. Let's open up a blank Word document. And as I mentioned, you get two tabs installed, the Auto Tag tab and the Auto Tag Manager tab. Within this Auto Tag Manager tab, over here in the Data section, we're going to start. And uh, first thing is this Data Source button. Uh, this is the button that connects you to your data. Um, so if you're using JSON, XML, SQL, or OData, um, and these are the four types that we support, this is where you'll set up that connection. To the right of it is pods. Um, this is a really great feature um, that lets you reuse items that you have already created. Um, this helps speed up the development process, um, and you can get more information on pods in our wiki. Th to the right of this is uh, the Generate Code button, and this is a handy tool for the developer types. So it shows you how to generate code from the template that you're working on right here for our Winwood engine. So if you're using the .NET, Java, or the RESTful engine, it shows you the code and how to reference the template and generate the, that output. Okay, um, over here to the right, within this tool section, I'd like to point out this find and replace tool. Uh, this is an easy way to update all your tags in your template to something that sometimes gets forgotten about. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. And it opened up on my other screen. Let me just drag this over. OK. All right, so this is a handy tool that if you want to update all your tags and your templates at once. So for example, say you built a template. And when you build a template, you, you connect it to a data source. And that data source, you give it a nickname. Well, when you created the template initially, you gave it a nickname. But as you've uh, moved through the development of the template, you, you don't feel like that nickname is, uh, is a good descriptive way to describe the data source. Uh, so you, you'd want to change it. And, uh, to do that, you come in here and define replace tool, and you'd enter in what the name of the what the nickname used to be. You go ahead and enter in the name that you like want to replace it with, and we give you the ability to uh, change that nickname um, in specific tags. Maybe you want to just do it in the chart tag, the if tag, the else, um, and the query tab. Um, or you could even uh, select them all and change um, that nickname, which is selected right here, um, and all these tags. So this is a good tool to use if you need to update tags um, and, and you need and you want to change values. Okay. Next thing to the right. Um, first, I like to. Uh, show you the about button. This gives you information on the version that you're using. So here, you can tell that I'm using version 15.2.279.0. 
um, using Word 64 bit. So, also lets you know what version this license is valid to. Uh, for me, uh, my license is valid to version 16. Um, so, if if a version 17 came out, I would have to get a new key because um, this is only allows me to use my key up to version 16. Uh, it tells you when uh, your license key expires. So mine is going to expire uh, this year, July 30th. Um, and another good th handy thing it does is over here it tells you uh, it shows you the IP addresses of all the people who are using this key at the moment you click this about button. Okay. Next thing um, point out is this license button. So if you're performing a major update, say from version 14 to 15, um, then you'll need to add your new version 15 key here. Or if you're if you need to change your license key from your temporary key to your permanent key, this is where you'll do it. You'll copy it from the email and you'll control V, paste it into here. Okay, um, to the right is this getting started guide section. And today watching the webinar is, your, is the best first step to learning auto tag. Second step I would suggest is going to our Winward Tutor. This gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do something. I'm gonna go ahead and click this right here. Still opening on my other screen. Let me just slide it over. Okay, and uh, once you open up the Winward Tutor, it gives you a bunch of different topics that you can learn uh, information about. If you click on any one of these topics, it gives you uh, still further subtopics of it. I'm gonna go ahead and select this, inserting a tag, show you what one of the tutors will look like. So once you get in here, you'll know, once it opens, uh, there'll be the objective of the tutor and also procedures or the steps to perform in order to perform this task of inserting a tag. We also give you a GIF. Um, so if you click this show me how on any one of these steps, we'll give you a nice little GIF. This one's simple, but shows you what we're trying to explain in our uh, written procedures. Again, this is a great second step uh, for step-by-step -step reference when building uh, templates. Okay, my next recommendation in learning auto tag is looking at the samples that we provide. So over here, I'm going to go ahead and click the samples button, which opens up this getting started guide right here. Um, within this, uh, there's some step by steps, there's some tutorials, but right now I like to focus on this samples template section specifically this additional um, portion of it. So this additional section um, contains your tag tutorials for your SQL and your XML uh, data sources. We'll be including tag tutorials for JSON, but we aren't fully there yet. Um, we'll be focusing on SQL, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. So for any tag that you can utilize in auto tag, we have a sample for you. So if you wanted to see get some more understanding on charts or link tags or switch tags, we have samples for all the tags. I'm going to go ahead and just click on this if tag, show you what one looks like. And then, there we go. So here, you can see this step-by-step -step procedures, instructions on how to use the F tag, the else tag, 
different scenarios surrounding the if tag. Cool thing about this and this on and the samples is they're all they're connected to our Northwind SQL server database. So you can actually generate output from these SQL samples. So you can see the output of the samples as you go along. Great, this is great next step for referencing the use of specific tags with examples of each. Okay, I'm gonna close that and come back to the slideshow for a moment. Okay, we just went over the auto tag manager tab. Let's now discuss the auto tag tab. So here's where we'll actually create the template. A very easy template using some for each and out tags. Basically, I'll show you how to select the tag, how to insert using the wizard for SQL and XPath, how to create an input parameter, how to generate output, and how to pull your data in using the data bin. Now, for an overview of what a for each tag is, a for each tag does three things. One, it fetches a set of data or the specific data that you want to utilize within your data source. Two, it can create, it can repeat that data through an iterative loop. For example, if you're trying to create a list. And third, it repeats content between the beginning and ending for each tags. The ending for each tag just tells AutoTag when to stop repeating content with each iteration of the loop. The for each tag is a tag that you'll use regularly. Now, the most common tag is the out tag. The out tag is basically short for output. So when you're trying to display data from your data source within your template, when you're ready to display a number, an image, or text, this is when you'll want to use the out tag. Tags are simply placeholders for your data. Now for each tag doesn't display info, it gathers the data that you wanna use, loops through the data, and repeats the contents between the tag. The out tag displays the data that you want your users to see. So let's uh, go back to Word. I'm gonna open up another blank document. It's opening on the main screen this time, good. Blank document. So the first thing to do when creating a template is to connect to your data. So I'm gonna go up here in the Auto Tag Manager tab. I'm gonna go over here and click this Data Sources button. And this opens up our connection editor. editor. Here, um, you'll see that there's an active in our recent inactive section. Um, these are some of the previous templates that I've worked on. I actually want to just do one thing, uh, delete that, delete that. We're gonna be using those today. Uh, so this just shows you some um, in, uh, recently used um, data source connections. Uh, these are some from the clients that I've used. Um, But we're here to create a new data source. To do that, you go, you start by clicking on this new tab. And within this new tab, it gives you a bunch of different options to connect to. Here I can connect to a SharePoint list, Salesforce. I can uh, connect to XML, XPath1, XPath 2.0, OData, JSON, a um, bunch of different SQL uh, connections options here. Um, I have a few of these different options that you may not have currently. That 
because um, I have a lot of drivers installed on my system to assist other customers with their templates. You can also install different drivers depending on the SQL environment that you're using. In our wiki, you can find step-by-step -step instructions on installing them and, on, and also obtaining the proper drivers. For today, I'm going to connect to the Northwind SQL Server Database. So I'm going to go ahead and select this last option right here, SQL Server Database. Now, the first thing you want to do when setting up a connection is to give the connection a nickname, um, similar what we've talked about in the Find and Replace tool. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and call this Northwind SQL as we're going to be connecting to the Northwind SQL data source database, and I feel this is a good nickname. Um, please note that the nicknames, there cannot be any spaces, and it has to be one string. So no spaces in the nickname. Next. I'll want to enter in the server that I want to connect to. I'm going to be connecting to mssql.windword.net. Uh, this server is open to the public. Instead of selecting the database right now, I'm going to move over here to the credential side. Here's where I want to enter my username and password to access the database. So uh, the Northwind database, the, its username and password is demo demo. So I'm going to enter that in here. Demo for the username, demo for the password. Okay, over here, um, we have some different options for the display tables. Hovering over these, you can see the difference. Um, for today, I'm going to use select user. To the right is this read in metadata checkbox. It's checked by default. There's only a few times that you may not want to pull in all your metadata from your database schema, but this is a great option to keep checked. Now that I've entered in these credentials, the server and my username and password, I'm gonna go ahead and select the database that I wanna utilize. So I can click this drop down, and I have all these different databases. And these are the databases that I have access to based on the username and password that I entered. So that's kind of why I skipped the database initially and I entered the credential. So now these are the ones that I can access. So we're going to choose the Northwind database for this example today. Instead of going through all these steps, entering the server database credentials, if your DBA has provided you with the connection string, you can enter that information here just by clicking this use connection string and entering in that string right there. We're gonna go ahead though and connect using these entered in credentials. Also, uh, there's this root directory. This is for using relative paths within tags. So if you're referencing sub templates or images that are on a shared network, you can provide the root directory directory for auto tags to use to locate those sub templates or images. Now that I have all my information in, let's go ahead and test this connection. So I'm going to click this test button, and down here, data source test exceeded. Like to see the green. Green is usually a good sign. Red means there's some warning. So now that I know my data connection works. I'm going to add it. I'm going to click on this add button. And now you can see before there wasn't anything inactive. Now here is our Northwind SQL data connection. 
All right, great. That's everything you need to do connect to, to connect to a data source. So I'm going to go ahead and close this connection editor. Okay. And after connecting to a data source, AutoTag will automatically show you the database schema over here on the right. You may have noticed that it opened up um, as we closed out the connection editor. So these are all the tables and the views that I have access to. Access to. You may have stored. So you may have access to stored procedures. These won't be listed here in the data bin. You can access those through the data tree, and I'll be showing you that a little later. But these are all the tables and views that I have access to based upon the username and password that I entered earlier in that connection editor. So now that we're connected, let's go ahead and create a table, a pretty basic table. So I'm going to go over here, select this insert tab, come down here, choose the table. Table today that I want to make, um, let's go and make it three by two columns. Now, now I need to use auto tag to start tagging up my documents. For this example, we're going to use this categories table. There's a couple of columns here. There's the category ID, category name, description, and picture. But in our table, we just would only like to display the category name, description, and picture. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, give this give this a head. Of, I'm going to go ahead and fill out the header columns with those columns that we're going to be displaying the information from. So I'm going to category name. Let's do description and then picture. Okay, now that I have my header row, we need to supply the data from the categories table to do that, I'm going to select right here under the category name. And wherever your cursor is blinking, this is where the tag will be added. So I'm going to go up here to the auto tag tab. Again, my cursor is blinking here. I'm going to click on this tags drop down. And if you hover over any one of these tags, it'll give you a, a brief description of what the tag is for. I'm going to go ahead and select our for each tag. And as I said, it placed it right where the cursor was blinking. I'm going to go ahead and select this because I want to point out a couple of things first. Um, in this auto tag tab, you'll notice this tag properties right here for each tag properties. This lets you know which tag you're selecting. So since I've selected a for each tag, it lets me know right here that I'm using a for each tag. So easy way to tell which tag you've selected. So let's go ahead and focus on this nickname and variable. By default, AutoTag provides you with a variable name for the tag. For this, it's labeled as var name one. Let's go ahead and change this to something a little more descriptive. So let's call it var categories, as we'll be working with the categories. Press enter. And I'll give a prompt. Do you want to update all tags? It's the only tag, so I'm just going to select no. So this variable right here, this var categories, this is the name that AutoTag uses to references, reference this tag. But what if we want to make this tag easier for people to know what the tag is used for? Well, you can come up here and give it a nickname. So say you've 
you want to help somebody out in case someone is going to be needing to review the template or work on the template later. Nicknames are a good way to help indicate what the tag is used for. So since we're going to be using categories, I'm going to go ahead and assign this a nickname categories. And when I press enter, you'll see this for each tag change. And it was for each, and now it's category. So a nickname is just a nice, easy way to be able to read this and to give you an understanding of what you're working with. All right, now let's select the data that we want to use with this for each tag. So up here in the tag properties, there's a shortcut for selecting the data. So I'm going to go, and it's this data tree. So I'm going to open the data tree. And here we have listed the tables and the views, which we have seen over in the dat data bin. But we have also have access to our stored procedures. So I'm going to go ahead and select this entire categories table for the for each tag and when i do that it should be bringing back all the information hovering over it can help you see what's being returned another thing to to help understand what data is being populated in this is this preview button i'm going to click this so you can see from the from this preview that if that I'm selecting the correct data that I want to use. So here you can see I'm bringing back the category category ID, the category name, the description, and picture. So I use this preview button quite often as um, developing templates just to make sure that I'm selecting the correct data that I want to see before I generate the output. So now that I know I'm getting the data that I want, I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now to display the data, we need to use out tags. So I'm going to place my cursor right here to the right of the categories of this categories for each tag. I'm going to go over here to the tags. And this time, I'm going to add an out tag. Now, I need to select what needs to be displayed in the out tag. So I'm going to go ahead and select it, go back to the data tree. And here, this time, you'll notice that this data tree looks a little different. By default, auto tag knows that we are referencing a for each tag. So you can see the VAR categories. Remember, we changed that earlier. And all the data within that for each tag. The option to select the tables and views uh, collapsed by default because um, you don't want to pull your data directly from the tables. If you did, you would just repeat the first record in the row, however, as many times as it loops through the data. You want to reference this for each tag right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select the category name. And with it selected, I'm going to click preview just to make sure we are returning the category name. Uh, so here, beverages, yep we are getting the category name. Again, just a way to ensure that I'm receiving the correct data. Okay, close this. So next thing, we want to add uh, another out tag to display the description value. I'll go back up the tags, select out, highlight the tag, come up here to the data tree so I can display select the data that I want to be displayed, and description. Lastly, let's put the cursor in, under, in the picture column, go back to tags, choose another out tag, 
select it, come to the data tree to choose the data and picture this time. All right, almost done. Lastly, we need to add the end for each tag. Again, the end for each tag tells AutoTag when to stop looping through the content between the beginning and end tags. So whenever you add a table, you want to put the end for each tag outside of the table. You may think it's logical to put it right after this last out tag in the table, but in actuality, so you don't create a blank row at the end of your list, you want to put it outside of the table. So if I cursor outside of the table, go up to the tags, and this time choose end for each. So this end for each is going to tell auto tag when to stop looping through the data, when to the stop, when to stop displaying the category name, description, and picture for each record as it iterates through the loop. A cool thing about um, AutoTag is that we support about 90% of Word's functionality. We don't support Word art, so we don't suggest using it in your templates. Use input tags instead to bring in your image logos. But since, <coughs> excuse me, since you're using Word, you can style the table any way you want to. So with the table selected, um, can come up here to the table tools, design. Um, for this, yeah, I do want a header row, a banded row. I don't need a first column. I like to style this a little, so let's choose the green. All right, that's how easy it is to style your table. Now let's output this to see how it looks. I'm going to go to the auto tag tab. And I could click on this output button or there's a drop down. I'm going to go ahead and select this. So when you want to output, we give you a bunch of different choices. You can output the docx, HTML, PDF, printer, RTF, XLSX for Excel and PPTX for PowerPoint. Uh, grayed out because they don't cross platforms. You would have to use Excel or PowerPoint for outputs of these kinds. The default is DocX, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Um, there, this just says you need like to save the template. Say yes, uh, save it to my desktop. And give it a name, save. Okay, let's go ahead and compare. So I'm gonna split my screen so we can see both the template over here on the left and the that and the output over here on the right. Uh, one thing you may notice is the picture isn't showing an image, it's just the raw data from the database. So I'm just gonna close this for a minute and uh, and cor correct that. But before we do, I'd like to show you that here, from the template we created, we have now our table listing all the category names, all the description. Let's fix the picture. I'm gonna go back, select the picture tab. Again, you can tell that I'm selecting this alt tag by the alt tag properties here. Um, with So we're gonna give this a type. If you like to display a picture, we, we give you different types, different options for different types to display. Can you display a base 64 template, bitmap, date, number, PDF, template, and so forth. For a picture, you're, you, you're gonna wanna select a bitmap. And when you do this, you notice that it gives you an icon right here. Um, can even adjust the size if you want it. Adjust it and to specified, specified height, specified width, fill width, 
Uh, for this example, we're just going to go with specified width. So here we've chosen to display it as a bitmap to get the image displayed. Let's just make sure we are going to actually have an image display. So I'm going to select the picture, the, uh, this picture alt tag, and again, I'm going to press preview. And here you can see we are re returning an image, just what we wanted. Perfect. So let's go ahead and output this again, just to make sure that the picture is displayed. Say yes. Split the screen. All right, and here you can see, before we were just showing the raw data, here we're actually showing the picture. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Um, next thing I'd like to point out is that when you connect to a data source, you don't just need to connect to one data source. You can connect to multiple data sources at once, as well as different types, XML or SQL, or any of the other types. So we're going to go ahead and connect to another data data source, so data type. So I'm just going to add some text in here just to set, help separate the tables and give an idea of what we're going to be working with. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect to a second data source. So I'm going to go select the Auto Tag Manager tab and click select this data source button. You may notice that there is a green circle on this data source icon button. This just lets you know that you are connected to a data source. I'm going to go ahead and open the connection editor again, and you'll still see that we're connected actively to the Northwind SQL database. Let's go ahead and create a new connection. Select the new, and this time we're going to connect to a different data source. Let's connect to an XML data source. I'm going to select this XML XPath 2.0. So this XPath 2.0, it just gives you the latest and greatest functions compared to XPath 1.0. With this selected, first thing to do is enter a nickname. So I'm going to go ahead and call this Northwind XML. Again, remember, no spaces. You can either, next, you can either come down here and type in the URL where you can go ahead and browse to a file by clicking on this folder icon. And since we're going to connect to one of our sample databases, I'm not, I went ahead and selected that folder button. So when you install AutoTag, you get in this documents folder, the auto tag folder. In this folder uh, is your data and sam your data and sample templates folder and a bunch of other backups. Well go ahead and select this templates folder. I'll come down here, XML files. I'm gonna change this so we can see all files. So when you install auto tag, we have give we have tons of word samples for you to use and use as references. Um, there's a little over 200 different samples that do get installed. We're cleaning these up all the time, adding some, removing some, but these are all the templates, sample templates that come installed. And you can also see that there's some Excel templates, uh, Podified, Pod templates, PowerPoint templates. But I'm going to go back here, change this to XML, because we're looking for a data source. I just wanted to point out where these templates can be located. I'm going to go back to the Auto Tag tab. I'm going to go down to this data folder. And here are all our XML 
sample data file that you can use. This example, we're going to be using this Northwind data. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Choose open. Once selected, I can add a, add a protocol. I can add a schema. Um, I can test to make sure I can connect. Here, yes, data source tested successfully. I'm going to go ahead and add this. Now, when I add it, we'll have, I have two connections now in this active. I have my Northwind SQL and this new Northwind XML. I've, you can connect to as many data sources as needed. I've heard of up to nine XML files being referenced in one template, but you just set up the ones you need for the template you're going to be using. So now that I've added it, let's go ahead and close this. It'll open up the data bin again. Uh, this time, you'll notice that it looks a little different. We still have our Northwind tables and views, but now we also have our Northwind XML database. And since this is XML, you'll see that we have our parent nodes and our child nodes. So there's another cool option to make things easier for you when you're going to create a template, and that's that you can just drag from this data bin to the template to create a table for you. So in this example, let's go ahead and use the employees table. Drag this over, let go of the mouse, and when I do that, it brings open this select columns for the table. So here, you can either create the table with all the columns that are selected. You can deselect them all. You can choose columns. So for this example, let's make a table showing the first name, last name. We want the first name first, so I can come over here, rearrange the order. Let's also add a higher date and a country. So for this table, we just want to show these four, and we want it to rearrange this. So I'm going to click OK. And you can see that AutoTag has created the table for me. Here's my for each, my out tags for the first name, last name, higher date, country, and the end for each. Pretty, it's a nice way AutoTag gets this working for you quickly. Um, let's go ahead and style this a little. Um, just add some names. So let's make sure we're actually pulling the data that we want to see. So I'm going to select this employee for each tag, go to the AutoTag, and let's preview it. So this preview is a lot different from the SQL preview, and this is because this is XML nodes as opposed to table columns that are formatted in a specific way. So as I collapse these these employee nodes, you can see that I have I have different records. This is for Janet. This record. This next one's for Margaret, and so forth and so on. So it looks a little different, but we are still retrieving multiple employee records. Let's go ahead and close this. Let's now go ahead and preview this first name just to make sure it's returning the information we want. And here it's going to be displayed Nancy, first name. Perfect. Again, since this is a word base, we can style this any way we want. Let's keep this still for header row. Let's keep band of rows. Not, we don't need a first column for this one. Let's give this one a slightly different style. Let's go ahead and choose blue. So let's go ahead and output now to see what this style will actually look like. So go back to the auto tag. I'm just going to click on this. Uh, yes to save. Click the screen. Close this data bin. 
we don't need it right now. And here, we still have our first table, SQL table, different categories. But now, down here, we have our XML table, playing the first name, last name, hire date, and country. Hire date, not the nicest of readable formats. Uh, this is the data that's, that's directly coming from the database. Let me show you how to format this to make it look a little nicer. I'm going to close this. So I'm going to go ahead and select this higher date. Go up here to this alt tag properties, and I'm going to choose format data. So similar, similar to Excel, to Excel, you can format and within a formatted date. I like this full length, March 14th, 20, 2001. I like that format. So if it's selected, I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. Let's close it. Let's go ahead and preview it just to make sure that we are gonna get what we're requesting. And yep, May 1st, 1992. So month, date, comma, year. Great. Let's output this again just to see how this looks. And perfect. Here this time, our higher date is in a more readable, friendly format. Okay. All right, well, this is great. Um, can just display data from your data source, um, display all the information. But what happens if you want to provide some filtering before you generate your output? Well, you can do this using uh, some input parameters. So in this auto tag tab, I'm going to go over here and select this input parameters button which opens up our define parameters. Here is where I can define my parameters. I'm gonna go ahead and click add, and give this a name. And since we'll be working with the categories, let's call it category. Press enter. Um, I can give it a default. Uh, one of the beverages, one of the categories was beverages. So let's give it EV. Yeah. Spell it correctly. Um, it's required by default. Um, I can even change the type if I wanted to. Can have the input parameter be currency, date, integer, number, select, text. Uh, select just gives you an auto tag drop down list to choose the values you want from. In this example, we're just going to want text, so I'm going to choose that, save it. Now, how do we utilize that input parameter to filter out data? I'm going to go and select this categories for each tag. And above that in this tag properties section is this Windows button. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And this will open up the SQL wizard. Here, over here on the left side are the tables and the views that I have access to. In the center section is the list of columns. This is what we'll be gathering, the category ID, category name, description, and picture already filled out for us. Below this is the sort section. So what happens if I want to sort my output by category name. We do that simply by choosing the column, Hold on. select by category name, sort by, drag it down here, and that's how you set up a sort. Over here on the right is our data preview pane, and you can see the category names are now being sorted alphabetically, A to Z. If I click on this and choose Z to A, you'll see now the category names 
to be an alphabetized Z to A. Let's change this back, A to Z. Okay, below this is the filter section or the, or the SQL where clause. This is, you, this is the section that is used to filter out data using the input parameter that we just created. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this click here, add a group. I'm gonna next select click here to add a filter. I'm gonna select click here to select the node. So this is what we wanna filter by. In the categories table, category name. You can make this filter equal to, not equal to, contains, not, does not start with different options. We like to have it equal to, so we're going to go ahead and keep it that. And then here, click here to set the value. I'm going to go ahead and select that. Over here on the right, I'm going to click on this drop down. And here, is a list of all the parameters that we can uh, choose to filter by. We've only set up one, so there's just one. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this. And when I do this, you may notice that the data preview pane has uh, changed. It's only now displaying one value, and um, that's because we set beverages to be the default. Um, down here, uh, this is our where clause that we just created right here, where. Um, this, this section is grayed out. You can't edit in this part of the SQL wizard. If you wanted to update this select statement, you would do that through the tag editor. And we'll show you updating through the tag editor in the intermediate training. But you may notice that we are now dynamically adding the where clause for the categories input parameter. You'll notice that the dollar sign, squiggly bracket, this is how we define variables that you want to reference within auto tag. And it even has our order by. So this kind of cool, this kind of cool way to help you learn SQL statement syntax just by dragging and dropping certain fails. Now that we set up our input parameter to equal the category name within the table, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now what happens when we generate output? Let's go ahead and click this. Yes to save. And this time we get a, a prompt for our input variable asking for category. Um, let's go ahead and change this. I remember produce was another option, so let's go ahead and say okay. Okay, split the screen. Now the output here is only showing produce. Before it was showing all categories, now we're only showing the category name produce. I oh geez, notice the time uh, getting close to the very end. I have one more thing I want to show you. I'm sorry I may go over a second, but I'd uh, like to show you the X path uh, now for setting up uh, a static filtering. What I just showed you was dynamic filtering. Uh, now I'd like to show you static filtering with the XML. So I'm going to go ahead and close this, maximize this. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this employee for each tag. Come up here to the wizard button. And this is our XPath wizard, a little different from the SQL um, wizard. That's because now we're dealing with nodes instead of our formatted columns. So at the bottom here, um, this is the, 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 the query that's being generated dynamically. 
just like in SQL. So what happens if you wanted to add an order by um, for this XML table? You can do that by clicking here. Click here to add an order by. Let's go ahead and choose first name. Click OK. Now when we do this over here, you'll notice in the data preview that we're ordering by first name. We got Andrew, we got Ann, we got Janet, Laura, and so forth. If we wanted to switch this to descending, we would just click on ascending, choose descending, and now when we look, our data is going in the opposite way. First name Stephen, first name Robert, Nancy, and so forth. It, in XPath, you don't have the order by option. We give you this ability in auto tag. So now what if you want to filter statically? No matter how many times we output the XML data, we just want to see those employees who are in a specific country. Let me show you how to do that. So let's go over here and click here to add a group. And then click here to add a condition. Uh, click here to select the node. So here I mentioned we want to filter statically by country. Uh, choose country. Again, you have the options equal to, not equal to, all these different options. We want to keep it equal to. And here we're going to click here to set the value. So we want to just see in this example those employees who are in the UK. I'm just going to go ahead and type that in right there. Okay. So these are now we're filtering statically to just show you the records for those employees where their country is equal to UK. And you can see it down here as well. Let's go ahead and click OK. Let's output this. Okay, let's go ahead and enter seafood this time just to switch it up a little. All right. There's our top one with just seafood, the input parameter, the dynamic parameter that we entered. And down here is our XML table where we added our static filter, where we are now only displaying those employees that are in the UK. So that's how you can filter your data either dynamically with input parameters or statically by giving it an uh, actual value. Okay, sorry I ran a little over. Let's go back to our, our slides just to make sure we covered the topics. Uh, so next slide 10, uh, we went over the SQL and X path wizards. I showed you how to sort dynamically and statically. We discussed input parameters that allows you to add input just before generating output. Our input parameter had a default value, showed you how to reference that input parameter through the, um, the wizards, and, uh, and I showed, and through the generating the output, we were prompted for the value. All right, you may want to take a screenshot of this if you can while we're on this slide. Here are the resources that you can utilize. If you want to look up anything from our knowledge base, you can do this at wiki.winward.net. We're constantly updating the wiki. We're actually completely re revamping it. You'll see a new wiki coming out in the next couple months. If you can't find what you're looking for, you can reach out to our amazing support team at support.winward.net, or you can also email them at support at winward.net. So if you have any questions that you can't find the answer to, go ahead and contact our support team. If you want to retrieve your license key, you can do this at store.winward.net. And if you want 
any changes or have any feature requests that you want added to the engine or auto tag, you can do this at ideas.winward.net. Okay, uh, next week uh, we'll be having offering the intermediate training uh, webinar. Uh, we'll go over more advanced for each tag. We'll go over more advanced features for the for each tags, uh, how to column, how to do column based instead of row based tables. I'll uh, show you how to show and hide specific things using the if else tags or the switch case tags. Uh, we'll can show you how to conditionally format your output. So maybe you want to show red text or fill in a certain color. And we'll show you some of the different menu items in Excel. All right, uh, Q&A session now. I do see a couple of questions. Uh, one moment while I go ahead and read those. Does the one question we have, does the wizard work with JSON or XML? Uh, yes. Um, yes, it does. There are, let's get back, um, as yeah, this one was just the, this was an SQL table. So clicking the wizard button will just open the SQL wizard. This is an XML table. Um, this will this at auto tag knows that it's XML. So when we click the wizard button, it'll open up the X path wizard. If I did have a JSON table, um, if I did click on the wizard, it would open up a JSON wizard as well. Uh, so yes, uh, the wizards do work with JSON or XML. It's just based on the it'll open up the specific wizard based upon the data source that you're connecting to. Uh, one more question, good question, uh, especially JSON since it is a very popular data source. Um, okay, what if you have, let me read this next one. What if you have a table in a table? Can you target individual data or sum a column or of numbers or show table in a table? Um, yes, uh, you can definitely sum uh, the columns. And that's one thing we will be showing you in the next, uh, in the intermediate webinar, we will have a, uh, we'll we'll go work through a template that lists the sales amount of different employees, and I'll show you how to sum up uh, those columns um, so you can display the total of the columns, the total of uh, the rows. So yes, uh, and we'll also use a uh, the sum equation. Uh, that's one thing I don't think. I, mentioned in the slide, but uh, there are some equation um, functions that you can use um, that we have already set up, um, and we will show you the sum, uh, the sum function. The question about a table and a table, I think you could have one. I haven't tried it yet. Um, I, I'd have to actually experiment with that. Uh, But I could, I could come up, I could test that out and uh, let you know the answer to that question. Um, but you can definitely sum up columns um, using equations. Um, let's see if we add a table uh, two by two by two. So yes, you can. You can do um, tables and tables and using different for each tags, you could display different information in here. You could set up a, a for each tag out here, 
um, that will loop through this entire table. You could then set up a, a for each tag within this other in, inner table to loop and display the different information in these columns. So forth, add the And for each tag outside, set up out, out tags and these others. And I haven't connected anything to a data source. You would be adding the out tags and then going up to the data tree and selecting. Um, it's saying right now it's the select is empty. That's because this hasn't been assigned um, any data yet. Um, and then come through here and do an end for each. So yes. Um, you could set up a table within a table um, to display information. Um, I hope that helped you um, helped you with your question. See if there's any other questions. Okay, so everything that's been asked. So uh, some really good questions. Uh, this is a uh, yeah, this is a good one. I haven't come across a template with this scenario yet, but uh, as you can see, yes, it is possible, um, can even. Okay. All right, well, there's going to be a survey at the end of this webinar. Please feel free to fill it out truthfully. Any feedback that you can provide will help me and the and the attendees of the next webinar. Um, I hope I answered all your questions. If, if I didn't, uh, please expand on them or you could e contact us um, at the support um, through, our, through our ticket at support at winward.net if, if you have any follow-up questions to that. Um, well, thank you for joining today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And uh, goodbye now. Hope to see you at next week's intermediate training webinar.